You're here. We just can't hear you, Councillor Herbert. I can hear you now. Present. Welcome. Uh, and we have Councillor Johnston. And of course, myself, Heather Watson. Going down this side, we have our acting, um, <laughs> acting clerk, <laughs> Tina Tate Hartwig, our CAO, Lana Arthurs, our recreation manager, Mike Mood, and planner, Christina Coulter. Hello and welcome. So with quorum council in attendance, uh, I will call the meeting to order. I will now read the land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that we are on the treaty and traditional territory of the Nichi, Saginaw, and Nishibeg. We offer our gratitude to the First Peoples for their care for and teachings about our earth and our relations. May we honor those teachings. And just hold for a moment of silence, please. Okay, so moving on, I've got two copies of the agenda in front of me. I apologize, I'm going to get confused on this. Uh, on to item number four, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Nothing from council? Um, seeing nothing, could I please get uh, an adoption, a motion to adopt the agenda for today? Just oh, as yeah, revised. The... Thank you, thank you. I've got two copies, yes. Councillor Johnson, Councillor Watt, you have made up there, yes. All in favor? And that motion carries. Um, is Councillor Gavort just in by audio? We don't know. Do we have video for him today? Or he's just, just audio by phone. Okay. Oh, yeah, there, there. oh, there you are. Perfect. <laughs> Great background. Uh, moving on, uh, item number six, uh, adoption of the minutes. Uh, any business arising from the minutes? So we've got three sets of minutes uh, on the agenda. Could I just get a motion to receive and approve those, please? Deputy Mayor Nelson, Thank Councillor Vervoort. All in favor? And that also carries. Uh, on the consent agenda today, uh, we have just one item, a municipal appraisal form for land division severance, uh, just a motion to receive and approve that item. Councillor Watt, so Councillor Johnson, all in favor, and that too carries. Okay, we have, on, on to the fun stuff now, we have a whole bunch of people here today um, and we want to celebrate their achievement. Um, I guess I'll really like to do that now. Yeah, cool. This is probably the, the first formal presentation of this since, uh, since the new council. So welcome. I'm so glad to have everyone here on this. So earlier this winter, the uh, U18 Tour Dukes uh, wrapped up a couple of big wins, right guys? Um, the 38th Annual Pembroke Regional Silver Stick Tournament, as well as the International Silver Stick Tournament, big wins. Uh, I can tell you that we are so, so proud um, of how you guys represented Durham, Doug Township, uh, and the Dukes. Um, your athleticism and your ability to compete and win really, really should be celebrated. 
but this moment actually represents so much more than the hardware that you brought home that weekend. Um, all the hours that you've put in at the rink have created those strong bonds uh, and friendships with your hockey family, not just for the players and coaches and volunteers, but for the parents. You've got one big hockey family that are with you now. And, and the athleticism that got you to where you are, it really shows that you've developed and demonstrated skills that are going to carry you beyond, beyond hockey and into life and into your career. Uh, skills like respect, leadership, teamwork, and commitment. So I congratulate you all on this important milestone, uh, and thank you for making us all proud of our Duro Dukes. Thank you. We'll hopefully ask for the media to take a couple of photos or anybody in the gallery who wants to take a photo. We'll get everybody back up here again and do some photos. Sound good? Awesome. Um, and then as they come through, we'll do handshakes for you guys as well. So, first up on the, this is on the coaches, this is coach's, on the coaches bench. We've got Ned O'Grady. No, they're all work coaches. Of course they are. Yeah. 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 Well, we're the names there for sure. So, Ned O'Grady, Mitch Fox. Kyle Nelson and Pete Addison are to be congratulated. <laughs>
Recent changes to the Planning Act through Bill, <clears throat> excuse me, through Bill 23 limit how site plan control can be applied to residential development. So the township's legal, con uh, legal firm confirmed that requiring site plan approval for residential development less than 10 uh, units is no longer a valid under the amended Planning Act. So staff discussed the rezoning with ORCA with that in mind um, and determined that the rezoning could be even further refined to apply the holding symbol only to a portion of the severed parcels between the top of the three to one stable slope and the top of slope of the escarpment. It, staff felt it would be appropriate if the area um, between the top of slope and the rear of the parcel be placed in the environmental conservation zone and the remainder of the lots from the top of the three to one stable slope to the front lot line could remain in the rural zone. Staff support this approach as it will allow future owners of the severed parcels the ability to develop within the portions of the severed lots that are zoned rural without the need for additional slope stability studies. And then if future building plans cannot confine the development to the rural zone, then the owners will be required to submit additional technical information to the Conservation Authority to ensure that the development can be safely permitted within the area zone rural holding. Development will not be permitted within the area zone environmental conservation except in accordance with the applicable provisions of the township's zoning bylaw. So the attached bylaw reflects these requirements that were discussed with ORCA and the township's uh, legal interpretation. During the preparation of the draft bylaw, staff also discovered that the registered survey severed parcels didn't align with the area of, uh, that was studied by Cambio for the slope stability. So staff would place a portion of the west side of lot A uh, only within the rural holding zone to capture that further study will be required if development is proposed in that area. The bylaw does not propose any changes to the existing commercial tourist zone or the remainder of the rural zone on retained lands. The application appears to be consistent with the provincial policy statement and appears to conform with the growth plan and the official plan. The following comments were received. Uh, Enbridge Gas had no objections to the application. The Autonomy Region Conservation Authority indicated that zoning should be made appropriate to protect future owners from site alteration or construction in the erosion hazard area to demonstrate consistency with provincial policy statement 3.1, which references natural hazards. ORCA indicated the application has demonstrated consistency with provincial policy statement sections 2.1 and 2.2, .2, which reference natural heritage and water, and sections 4.2.3 and 4.2.4 of the growth plan, which reference key hydrologic features, key hydrologic areas, and key natural heritage features and lands adjacent to key hydrologic features and key natural heritage features. Permits from ORCA will be required prior to any site alteration or construction in the erosion hazard and further 15 meters in, uh, into the site from that feature. The subject property is not located within a vulnerable area for a municipal drinking water source. Comments were also received from the following uh, members of the public. The owners of 394 Carbest Marina Road had no objection to the creation of the new lots, but did inquire whether there will be any change to the water table as a result. Township staff did reply that there were no concerns that related to the water table identified during the circulation of the severance applications. Staff also spoke with the owner of 1499 Birchview Road, who had questions regarding the nature of the application, the stability of the slope, and the need for the rezoning. After speaking with the owner, they verbally indicated their concerns appear to have been satisfied. After the writing of this report, written comments were also received from the owner of 406 Carvets Marina Road. The owner indicated that they are not opposed to the application, but are very concerned about the steep slope, 
between their property and the proposed severances. The owner requested that proper care be taken to ensure the water drainage and septic tank drainage does not harm their property. The owner did request to be notified of the decision of council. No further comments have been received from members of the public. And with that, I will turn it back to you, Madam Mayor, for any questions from the public or council. Thank you very much, Ms. Holter. So with that, is there anyone present either on Zoom or in the room who would like to comment on the application today that's before us? Hearing nothing, there's nobody wanting to speak up on this. I don't know if there's anybody just on audio. Nope. Okay. Okay. Council, questions? Councilor Watt? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Christina. That's a pretty involved report and a lot of work. Thank you very much. My question is, and maybe it's in here, but it's not my forte, so I'll ask. The building envelope that's left after the rezoning and so on and so forth, is it big enough to put a place on or to build on without having to go through minor variance and everything, or is that going to be another step down the road for these lots? So through you, Madam Mayor, to Councilor Watt, there is an envelope available on each of the lots without having to go through, but it may be very constrained. So it may be they're just meeting the minimum lot, or sorry, the minimum floor area on each of the seven parcels, but there is an opportunity to develop within the rural portion. If the future owners choose not to develop within that, then yes, they would have to come back to Council for a minor variance or a rezoning. All right. No, that's good. Thank you. Any other questions from Council? Okay. I guess we're with no more comments from those present, then we'll just be looking for a motion to close the public meeting. Councilor Johnson? Second. Deputy Mayor Nelson? All in favor? And that carries. Thank you. So we need to need a motion on this one. Deputy Mayor Nelson? I'll make a motion. We accept Christina's report. The recommendations? And the recommendation, yeah. And that's seconded by? Second. Councilor Watt? All in favor? And that also carries. This would probably be a good point to bump up 12.1 on the agenda so we can get that bylaw passed while folks are still here on that. Just looking for my document on that. Can I get a motion for 12.1 for the bylaw? I'll make a motion. Deputy Mayor Nelson? Seconded by Councilor Johnson? All in favor? And that also carries. Thank you very much. And then that will go through the regular public process for now and you'll be on your way. Thank you so much. Moving on, we have Mr. Weir from the County of Peterborough. Hello, sir. On a site plan control exemption request. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of Council and staff. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you today. The topic is one that is well known around here, maybe in two different means. One is, of course, it's our public works sand dome, which you all know about. But more importantly, the wide destruction that was created on May 21st of last year. And I know there's even, there's still, you're dealing with it. There's a piece of correspondence in your agenda. We've been dealing with that today. So I won't go into the letter in a lot of detail. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty short. What we are looking to do is to build a new sand dome. The one that was there totally demolished. Some of it ended up on the arena property. So what we're looking at, well, we looked at last year. There just was not time to do anything, especially when we're dealing with insurance and trying to wrap our head around what exactly we wanted. So late last year, we kind of decided what we're looking for. We're looking for a building that is of a different shape and slightly different location. You can see in the site plan that was provided with my 
um, letter, looking at a rectangular shaped building slightly to the west uh, where the dome was. And actually, since submitting this, we refined this to be more um, square on the property because we are um, going to be seeking an entrance onto County Road 8. Um, but we have to get approval from MTO in that regard. So we're going to have a, a building that's actually going to be um, a drive through for solving the sand uh, for loading our, our trucks. Under your site plan control bylaw, Council does have the authority to provide relief from the uh, site plan control bylaw and the, and the requirements of going through the process of obtaining site plan control approval. Uh, we feel that site plan control in this particular case is really a duplication of effort um, because we are we have to go through a whole host of things anyway. We we want to be able to go through those. So uh, we've listed a, a number of reasons why um, we think um, favorable consideration for our request be be in order. Um, site plan control may lengthen the process for obtaining a building permit. We know that uh, times of the essence we want to get on with building um, um, a, a structure as quickly as possible. It could be considered an emergency circumstance where, where we don't get our proper um, storage facility that may impact uh, the ability to have enough salt and sand in our domes to get into our trucks and get out there. We were lucky this winter, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Um, we're still going to deal with it tonight, I understand. Uh, but we, we would like to have um, a better situation for dealing with our materials. Uh, the destruction of the sand dome, of course, was unplanned. It was a natural disaster. Uh, the replacement of a pre existing structure uh, in approximately the same location, although the size may be a little bit different. We're looking at about 1,300 square meters. So it's probably about one and a half times the, uh, the area of the dome. Um, we're going to be um, going through a number of studies and analysis, and actually we're in the process of, of engaging consultants to do that. We're going to do a tech geotechnical analysis. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, traffic patterns so we can obtain our entrance on the Road 8. From, it's, it's our, of course, our road, but we need to group of MTO, like I mentioned. We're looking at stormwater as well. Uh, we need, in that regard, we need the approval of not only Orca, but MTO. Um, and we're uh, satisfying the township's building and planning departments uh, by, by going through these requirements. Uh, there will be no impacts to neighboring property as you know this is isolated property and surrounded by public roads. Uh, and presently we're compiling um, design specs for the inclusion into the RFP of the, the building. I mentioned this is hard to see and I apologize I should have included this report but it's, it's rectangular, it's about 17 meters in height. There will be um, a high concrete wall design uh, with a wood frame and then a, a steel roof uh, to provide for the indoor indoor loading of trucks. It will be the drive-through design for plow trucks and we'll have overhead doors. Uh, overhead door for the loader and sand stock piling. Uh, storage space minimum of 10,000 tons of sand. Um, and, ten, and 2,000 tons of salt. Uh, it'll be that structure, your picture, you see it on, along the highway sometimes, the MTO structures, is a translucent cover, covering. Uh, so that'll allow some light into the, uh, into the building as well, so we don't have to use so many lights in there. Um, they'll have uh, automatic uh, door openers, alarm system, um, and some of the things we're looking under other consideration is if the county gets into the, uh, the business of uh, icing, or sorry, applying de-icing material to the, the road ahead of time, ahead of storms, um, we want to have um, um, the ability to have a facility in there for them. Uh, perhaps solar panels, uh, etc. So, um, in conclusion. Um, we're not speaking, uh, seeking special consideration um, from council because, as mentioned, we do have to undertake traffic, stormwater, geotechnical, hydrogen, um, and we have to satisfy different levels of government, including yourselves. Uh, we just think that um, site planning control doesn't serve any value of the process. It's that's actually a duplication process. 
and it's in, in our, our opinion, some administrative minutiae that you know, we, can, we can do away with because we're going to be satisfying all the requirements of the township and the regulatory bodies anyway. So, uh, we do have a pre consultation meeting um, planned for uh, township staff at the end of the month, so uh, favorable consideration of the request would be great so we kind of know what we're talking about uh, at that meeting. So, we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for that, Brian. Any questions from Council? Council Watt. Just not, not a quick three, Madam Mayor. Um, and, and you're right, uh, Brian. It's not something that Council would normally do to circumvent the, the process of something like that, but this is a, a different situation than, than the norm, kind of like that. It it's boils down to safety. I mean, if you don't have enough salt and sand for the county to do the roads, somebody's going to be in trouble out there with the roads. So, I mean, this is a, a must do for us and if we can cut some red tape we always brag about it you know that the things we have to do is cut red tape i think this is a, a probably a good start uh, to go ahead with that um looking forward yeah, when you get your dome um and this is just my own comment uh, to do the um, preparation ahead of time ahead of storm we better find a really good uh, weather forecaster <laughs> yeah thanks and it, and it provides us with the opportunity to rethink how we do our roads because not only do we have enough sand and salt and stockpile at once uh, to be able to drive trucks through, make things a little bit more efficient, but we also look, as I mentioned, to having a storage facility for uh, anti icing liquid that you know, we can apply to the road in the future. And all in favor. Any other questions from Council? Well, just, uh, I'll just say a, a quick comment on it. I mean, looking at the, the site plan drawings where you're at. I mean, I think that this is really a really great example of those times when devastation hits, we try and build better, right? And look to the future and see how we can, um, you know, take take that devastation and turn it into something something good. So, so thanks for your thoughts and uh, proposal on that. Uh, motion from council. What's the motion? <laughs> I'll, move, uh, I'll move motion and the recommendation that we, uh, so Brian has presented with us. So to waive the site plan control yep. requirements. Yep. And anyone to second that? Councillor Verbort, we'll get you on the record. <laughs> All in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda, uh, we have the Duro Dunner Historical Committee a delegation from Mrs. Margie Morrissey. Is she, is she online? She's not. I don't I'll think. Them. I'll be Margie. You're going to be? Is that, is that we can do that? We can. Yeah, okay, come on up, Mrs. Yes. Benson. So I want to remind everybody we have a historical committee, it is, not a society. Um, we've been meeting for a number of years, starting in Durham. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, if you could, just from a microphone audio standpoint, so folks can hear you, Mrs. Benson, thank you. Is there a microphone here? Just, it, it'll just pick up off that, you're fine. Yeah. Okay, so it started in Bureau, and one of our first things was this uh, historical guide, little map with uh, pointing out all the points of interest. And then when we amalgamated, we had this one. I think Martina helped on that, and then we had a really super one that Martina did. But uh, these are really nice things for the um, places where people, tourists visit to uh, tell what the, what's going on. Um, we've done a number of plaques in the county. Uh, the church in Duro, Susanna Moody, Catherine Carr Trail, the dynamite explosion, and we did work on the cemetery um, list, you know, making names available and uh, a couple of monuments built and doing the best we could to find records and locations and so on. Uh, we have also records from both municipalities pre-1975 and uh, we took the care to wrap each one of the books there, Cessna books and tax collector's books, so that um, if somebody's doing research, that's their pretty much only hope uh, to find where people are. And um, I have a really nice example of that here. A lady named Elizabeth Boy came up from Georgia two or three different summers, and a member of our committee, um, it was usually me because I was around, <laughs> but uh, 
would, would show her uh, the books and where to look and so on. They're all wrapped in proper paper and tied and on shelving that's proper also. And uh, so she's written this thing, she's a, a, a two Richard Condoms, it's called. It's very interesting with all the family and so on. And one other accomplishment, if I've still got some more time, is this um, Bob Holmes one. So I, I, uh, we haven't heard yet, but we're hoping that we can um, get going again with the new council. And if you have any questions, try to answer them. <laughs> Thank you. Just just to add a little bit of context. I, I had a, an opportunity to meet with Mrs. Benson and a number of the the members of the historical committee, um, and and at this point, um, you know, their status as a committee is non-existent because it it ended when council's term ended. Um, so the request coming forward is so that you can still be a member of uh, or pardon me, a committee of council uh, and yes. do the work and be re reformed. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. Any just just if you just stay put for one second, Mrs. Benson. Any questions from council? Maybe more of a, a comment. A couple of comments. Uh, Ruth, uh, I'd like to uh, personally thank you for all your work. Uh, the historical committee is, is. I think it's very important for our our, our municipality to have the, the records and and uh, hopefully. Uh, know where they are and, and for future generations uh yeah. so thanks thanks for your work and and all yeah. the yeah. All, oh, yeah. all the committee that, that does all that work i, I really want to thank you um that's yeah. all i have to say yeah council what well, remember uh one of the things that you didn't mention here and i know it's been a kind of a hit and miss over the last few years is the line count yes how is it, how is the committee's feel on that? Is it is it kind of overwhelming, or is it something that it's uh, it's taken a bit more than we we actually probably thought it would, not knowing anything about it. Um, if it's at a point now, last last year, just before the summer break, uh, we were t looking at um, a crossed iron top for it. So that, I mean, it has to be safe. Yes. And um, I don't know about the rest of it, but that's the part that really worries everybody. And so the kiddies go up to look, they're, they're not going to be falling down in. So, is it, is I it think that's probably our main concern right now, Tom. Right. Is it, is it something the group would like to continue with, or would you rather yeah, slide that off your plate? Oh, oh, I see what you mean. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I guess we just sort of assume. But um, uh, council got the property and had some uh, preliminary work done and so on and I think we had a little celebration there at the start and I think it could be a nice little park for families to gather but um, are you mean I yeah I, it, it's just I, I'm kind of wondering if the committee wants to take that off the plate and, and deal with the uh, you know the historical side of things and everything you've done and done yeah. so well not you haven't done well not but but it is a it's kind of coming to a, an end very soon yeah. with any yeah. like that. Whether well, and we I just, think a lot of the decisions that are left are councils. Whether we just take the, the range from there and take it off your plate. Well, I mean, I don't want to speak for. No, for but maybe that's or, something you could ask and, and come back yeah, to us. You know, yeah. even, even an email back into the to the office and, and <clears> so that'd be fine that the staff could. And the other thing I forgot is the good registry for veterans who lost their lives in the war. And uh, Roberta Thompson has done an amazing job on that. She's got a book prepared, which is around every Remembrance Day and so forth. Um, there might be something further if anybody has ideas that we can promote it even more. But Councilor Johnson. Yeah, uh, Ruth. Uh, I, again, I want to thank you and the whole committee that's been there for the years. Mm -hmm. I'm a uh, Torontonian too, but I'm so into this. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I uh, we respect the work and the time that we put in. Thank you. I've been around for a while with, when you guys keep coming yeah. back and looking for money. And we try to support the best way we can. Um, and the, the killer there, uh, I drive by it every other day. Oh, yes. And uh, I, uh, I just, I just, the thing that bothers me a little bit is that I just don't want to see our good money put in there and no one ever stopping. I've never ever seen anybody stop it. I mean, it's not done yet. There's a gain on it and everything else. I understand that. But I uh, and I would like to see it finished to someone. 
Yeah, you know, I don't know exactly what's that other than the grate on the top, yeah. but we wanted something that could be seen through so you could see down below what actually happened. Yeah, but that, that's uh, as far as I know. So I just want to echo what Carol said. Well, I mean, we really appreciate the work that the, the committee has done over the years and the time and emphasis put in. Thank you. Really well, I hope it all works out. Yeah, well, it is very, very, very well for us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mrs. Benson. I wonder, um, perhaps, if staff, I know staff were meeting with the contractor um, at some point or discussing what was going on with the kiln. Um, if maybe we can get some formal update in, at a future meeting, um, and then we can figure out how, how the best way is to go forward with that for uh, to preserve that and, and get it finished so people can actually see it and, and access the site. I, I guess, Madam uh, Mayor, we need permission to start up meeting again once yeah. a month. We meet at the library as a committee. That's the request. Yes. Councillor Watt. One last uh, thing, um, and this is uh, maybe we could look at. Uh, I don't know how you would we're making it a geocache site. That would probably draw people to it too. So. The kiln project. Yeah. It already is. Look at that. There we go. We just got it done. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Excellent. Okay, thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Excellent. Councillor Johnson. Well, I'm going to make a motion that we uh, engage uh, again the Houston Historical Committee. We put out uh, whatever format they do to let the, uh, the applicants who will put the name forward for this again. I'm sure most of them will, but we should advertise them and get the committee going again. Okay. okay. Is there somebody who's willing to second that? I'll second that more. Deputy Mayor Nelson. Um, now I think we would probably, because this is kind of ahead of our strategic plan process and we're looking at all of the committees that are working within the township, um, we probably need to establish some sort of terms of reference. Where is that, does that need to fit within the motion or is that, how, does that happen before the committee meets or um, the first meeting? Through you, Madam Mayor, I think we would want to bring a terms of reference to council. So council um, decides the scope of the committee. Um, and then once we have a terms of reference in place, then we would do a solicitation for members so that the members know exactly what the committee does and what they're signing up for and the tasks that will be before them. That's the way I would think of it, but open to suggestions, of course. Okay, Councillor Watt. Thank you, three member. So would it be best then to to give them some, some uh, where to go ahead, do a, a motion in principle kind of thing? Do we get that the rest of that on the go or how do you want to handle that? So they can have an answer to take back to the people that you met with the other night. Yes, uh, say hi, Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think uh, the committee can't meet until they're appointed by council. Like they're not a committee until they're appointed. Right. So the members are able to meet uh, as a social group or yes. as a, a group of friends anytime they want. Um, we that can be done outside of the confines of uh, the township. But to be a committee of council, they must be appointed by council. And in our strategic plan uh, meeting that we had recently, and through a report I presented, we had discussed having terms of references for all of the committees before they were formed. So um, it's up to so, council. So maybe it's just if I had a motion, I'll just write down uh, that that, uh, that we will be providing a, a historical committee <coughs> in the near future. Just write down that. And who seconded that? I did. I, 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 okay. All right. Any other questions on the motion that's on the floor? All in favor? And that motion carries. So there we are. We'll hear from you. Yeah, that's right. Don't call us. We'll call you. Know. <laughs> they advertise, I guess, for um, committee positions, and uh, so we could answer that or send a letter. So yeah. Yeah, they'll they'll take care of that and get those invitations out and posted. Thank you very much. Thank you yeah, very thanks, much, Mrs. Yeah. Benson. Thanks, sure. yeah. Okay, so we are on to staff reports, section nine, and we have the uh, report and capital project status. Uh, any questions from council on that? Uh, is that a question, Councillor Watt, or are you just no, pausing I, for a moment? No, I, I thought or... I did, and I was just going back out of here again, now I don't see it, so it okay. couldn't have been anything major, major. All right, so then that's a motion to receive? Yes, please. All right, is there someone else second that? Councillor Johnson, all in favor? And that carries. 
Item 9.2, the refrigeration plant policy um, from the clerk's office. And I thought we had, uh, do we have our intern here? Hey, there's William Wood. Hello, Mr. Wood, how are you? Welcome. I'm good, thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor Watson, council staff, um, for the opportunity for me to speak today. Um, my name is William Wood. Uh, I was a policy intern uh, at the township for about the past um, three or four months. Um, and I represent uh, Trent. Um, it was part of a placement and uh, I had a great time and everybody was really good to me. So I really appreciate that. And I just wanna thank everybody for allowing me to have this experience because it uh, really helps out. Um, so my work at the township, uh, it included um, a policy review, uh, which I conducted during the first few weeks of, uh, of my placement, uh, developing a new policy index and uh, developing a new policy, um, which is part of the agenda today. So the draft uh, refrigeration policy um, is a policy where I found that there was a lapse in the current policies where uh, the current Ontario regulations, basically um, there's, no, there's no regulations or policies now which um, follow these regulations uh, according to the safe use of refrigeration plants. Um, I developed this policy in consultation with um, recreation manager, Mike Mood. Um, so just to give you a quick overview, um, currently the township of Durodummer currently operates two refrigeration plants, um, one within the Warsaw Community Center and the other is located within the Duro Community Center. These plants maintain the ice sheets that provide the community access to recreational service and activities within the township. Um, and the regulations that govern this is the Ontario Regulation 219-01 under the Technical Standards and Safety Act 2001. So as I said before, there's no, no currently no township policy that recognizes this regulation and the framework it sets out for standards and safety within refrigeration plants. Um, and what is proposed in this policy, it, it aims to accomplish um, is a codification of the standards laid out within the provincial regulations. Um, that the township can then use within our refrigeration plants. Um, so as the township streamlines and updates its policies in all departments following recommendations from the service delivery review, um, policies like the refrigeration plant safety policy um, could be seen as a beginning of policy uh, modernization. And also this specific policy could be seen as a commitment to safety for the staff and the public as well. Um, this policy in place, it will improve the township's understanding of provincial regulation and reduce township liability and promote a better culture of safety and responsibility with township facilities. Um, what I ask of council is for the endorsement of this uh, draft policy and uh, requests that uh, staff uh, continue developing the appendices for this policy and uh, bring back the finalized version for approval. Great. Well, thank you for that uh, that overview, William. Uh, any questions from council? Seeing nothing. Excellent job from Councillor Watt. <laughs> Floor is yours. I'll, yeah. I'll make a motion to follow William's uh, recommendation that uh, staff go ahead and, and uh, start with the appendices and so on and so forth. With and thank you very much. Excellent job. Thank you very much. It was uh, it was a great pleasure working with everybody. And anyone to second that motion? A seconded, please. Hello, thank you. Um, and before we call the vote, I echo uh, the sentiment, uh, William, from Councillor Watt. Thank you for your time. I understand that this this concludes your time with us. It's uh, the internship goes by so quickly. Yeah. But uh, but we appreciate that you uh, were able to to be here and contribute, and uh, wish you the best of luck as you further your your studies and your career. Thank you very much. And uh, again, I just uh, appreciate every everything. Um, special shout out to Martina. Um, she was really good to me and um, everybody else as well. I can't say enough good things. Wonderful. So all that's left is to call the vote. All in favor? And that motion carries. Thanks again, William. You take care. Thank you. Take care, everybody.
Okay, so on to a uh, report from Public Works, item 9.3, Culvert Pipe Supply. And Ms. Arthurs, is that you? Yes, thank All you, Mayor right. Watson, through you, the rest of Council. The recommendation is that Public Works 2023-05 report dated April 4th, 2023, regarding the Culvert Pipe Supply received, and that Council approve the pur purchase of Culvert Pipes from Armtech Inc. and ES Hubble and Sons. Uh, this particular purchase is already captured within the budget. This was just the uh, RFP that went out and the selected uh, suppliers for approval. Thank you very much. Any questions from Council? The, 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 the two, two different groups over here? Yes. Yeah. The one's well, for plastic more, and one's for... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Make a motion to follow the recommendation. Councillor Johnson, seconded. Deputy Mayor Nelson? All in favor? And that motion also carries. Um, on to item 9.4, MNRF uh, Dray Show funding from the Treasurer, which is also going to be you, Ms. Arthurs. Thank you, Mayor Watson, through you to the rest of the Council. The recommendation is that the Treasurer 2023-09 report dated April 4th, 2023, regarding the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry Dray, Dray Show funding be received for information. Um, as you can see in the report, this was uh, funding that we were made aware of at the last minute. Um, there was a letter that had been provided to some of the municipalities. Unfortunately, we were not captured in that distribution. Um, they did indicate that it was for those municipalities that had reached out and inquired about funding. We had reached out to MMAH uh, because that's who normally does your Ontario disaster relief funding. We weren't eligible. This funding came through another ministry, so um, maybe that's how we got missed. Fortunately, Mayor Watson was made aware and was able to provide us with that information uh, late, I think, on the Thursday with a due date on the Monday. So we uh, we had our manager of recreation as well as our manager of public works. Fortunately, our, our documents were captured and everything was in fine form to be able to pull a proposal together. So Paul did that and made the submission and we were fortunate enough to receive $141,323.20. So 90 and change of that goes to money that we've already spent on additional contractors, overtime, uh, machines that we had to rent. And then the additional is um, is going to be allocated to some tree replacement, some additional cleanup that hasn't been done yet, as well as some boardwalk replacement within the trails. Thank you for that. And I'll, I'll just speak to it really briefly. Um, it uh, it came to my attention through uh, folks who have a sugar bush in the community, um, Sweet Hill Maple, who are doing some digging around and, and brought it up. Um, seeing you know, if there's anything that, that they could actually, they were looking for help and information to be able to access some funding, but we, we quickly realized that it was not necessarily for individuals and their applicant, that they wouldn't qualify to put a proposal forward. So, uh, you know, after making some hurried phone calls, it was like a Thursday that it became, it landed on, on my desk, kind of as an initial inquiry and the application deadline was, uh, was on the Monday. So. Uh, you know, we, we were able to chase it down, and, and I want to personally thank staff um, for their work, namely, namely, namely Paul, our treasurer, and, and Alana herself, um, to be able to pull those the, the, the data together and, and literally submit a proposal in the, the 11th hour. Uh, and about a week later, uh, I got the call from Minister uh, Graydon Smith, uh, who's the minister responsible for MNRF. Uh, to, to let us know that our proposal was fully funded, which is a really great, great news story all in all. So, mm -hmm. so personally, thank you to, to yourself and, and Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pass that along to him um, for, for your work on that as well. Uh, so we're just looking for a motion to receive <coughs> on this day. We'll make a motion to receive, <coughs> and thank you, uh, uh, Heather and staff, for the quick um, response to it. Because I think I told them to call you. Ah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> And that's being seconded by Councillor Brevoort. Any other questions or comments from staff? Or sure. Councillor Rutherford? <laughs> Just to echo the uh, sentence. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Wynn. Awesome. All in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Moving on to item 9.5, Lolo Cantina, the Duro Community Centre lease agreement from, oh, the clerk's office. I almost turned over to <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ms. Jane Arwick, over to you. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Um, so the report that's before you is regarding the Mobile Canteen site at the Jerome Community Centre. Um, the recommendation that's before you uh, is regarding the lease agreement for that canteen and that the report be received and that a bylaw be passed at the appropriate time during the meeting to approve the lease with Mammoth Barbecue. 
Uh, the report that you've got in front of you uh, just provides some background detail about Men with Barbecue. Um, they were employees of uh, Chuck Wagon Barbecue. Mm -hmm. They've purchased the business and would like to keep running it in the same style that it's already been done. We haven't received any requests um, from the public or any other operators in the community for that spot. Um, and we have been able to negotiate an increase uh, in the lease and then an ongoing increase for the four years of the lease. So we will be bringing in additional revenue. It's about $125 per month in additional revenue than what we were making before. Um, and then we'll have a 3% increase each year going forward. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, council may have about this. And Mike was instrumental in working all these uh, arrangements out. I just did the administrative side, so fair enough. <laughs> fair enough, thank you. Uh, questions, comments from council? Do we make that before we make the motion or do we can do the comments? Either or. Go for it, Alex. Well, <laughs> Go, whatever. No, please. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, sign that uh, lease agreement uh, for the uh, mobile uh, canteen for, through that term that you've got lost. I'll second. Second by Councillor Watt. Now, the question I have, Mike, uh, did anything bother you at all, like parking or garbage or anything? Uh, like, it never bothered with any debts going on with the parking? And, uh, to you, um, Watson. Um, now, typically, we didn't have any issues. Mind you, a lot of Corey's term was through COVID, um, but they are tucked off to the side. Um, they're out of the way of the flow of the traffic. Um, and I do know that they're looking at actually running even more events um, to do you know, work in conjunction with the possible the flea market that we have uh, booked once a month for the next four four months or five months. Um, and then they want to kind of do other events like live music events and for the public. So I think they would be great for the community. And we'll see the additional revenue that's not even specified in this come from them. I know they have a good clientele. Yeah. In the past owners, they are really Come up with some good food. Mm -hmm. so, yes, and the, they're looking to um, stay with the same kind of um, food that they're offering with changes, mm -hmm. of course. Council, what question? Uh, not a question, just a comment. They, they do your, the past ones, and I'm sure these ones will, will echo what the previous did, but they did a fantastic job. But, and I don't know how they ever, I know they ran out of, of things sometimes pretty quick, so they got, which is a testament to how good the food was. But I have no idea how they figure out how much we're going to need for today and tomorrow. Like, it's a crapshoot, let me tell you. But mm -hmm. they do a great job on it. So let's hope these ones you know, do, do as, as well or even a better job. So kudos to them. Yeah, I'm sure they will do a great job because the, the employees had the all last year um, learned from Corey all year. So it's a good opportunity for them. Great. Any other questions? Well, we, uh, we'll be looking forward to welcoming the crew back, once we call the vote all in favor. And that motion carries. Um, we have item 9.6, oh, the introduction of a routine disclosure policy. And that's back over to you as well. Again, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Peter's just lagging. Um, so through you, Madam Mayor, uh, this is a uh, report, just about an introduction of a routine disclosure policy. Uh, so this is the report that the clerk's department has put in place. Um, we uh, put this policy in place under policy C09, which was the policy governing policies, where council provided staff the opportunity to put policies in place that are procedural, as opposed to um, to more uh, policy focus. So what this, sorry, I'm saying policy a lot, but what this policy and procedure allows us to do um, is to be able to be more transparent and to provide more information to the public without asking the public to go through FOIs or to um, have to make as many formal requests as they did in the past. Uh, so there is a form attached that uh, the public will be able to fill out. We'll have it on the website where they can come to the counter and fill it out. They can um, put what they would like to have access to, whether they want to see the originals, photocopy, scan. And as long as those documents are not covered um, by the MFIPA legislation, so maybe they have personal information or 
um, some other matter that needs to be um, redacted, we'll be able to provide them that information without going through a lengthy protocol. So um, there is a list in the procedure that I have shared um, of all the types of routine documents that we want to share, where they're located in the township, who's responsible for them, and we'll be posting that on the website as well, so the public knows where these items live within the township, also giving them uh, more access and more understanding of what we're doing. Thank you for that. Can I get a motion? Thank you. Deputy Nelson? Also moved. Recommendation, okay. Seconded. Councilor Report. Any questions, comments, Councilor Watt? Council, uh, just, a, just a quick uh, clip here. Um, no lack of better words. It's just, like I said before, it sounds like that's cutting red tape, so excellent. I mean, you know, it's making it easier for the public, which is what we want to do right across the whole board, so glad to see it. Good stuff. Any more questions, comments? All in favor? And that motion also carries. On to item 9.7, Peterborough Canadian Society Agreement, and that's over to Ms. Arthurs. Thank you, Madam Watt. Mayor Watson, through the rest of Council. The recommendation is that CAO 2023-10 report dated April 4, 2023 regarding the Peterborough Humane Society Agreement be received and that Council approve an additional amount of $8,000 from the Working Fund Reserve to be allocated to the 2023 Animal Control Budget. Um, this particular agreement was revised last year, but we did find um, most specifically over the last two months that it just wasn't addressing the needs that we have in the community. When there was a call for a dog at large, we don't have the resources, the equipment, or the trained personnel to be able to handle these types of calls. Um, and frankly, the response of, you know, there's not much that we can do is not sufficient. So we reached out again to the Peterborough Humane Society. Uh, there was a few things within that contract and the way that it was established that uh, Mr. Moran and I talked about making amendments to in hopes that we could keep our costs down. But to allow them to take on uh, that animal control, there is an additional cost. There will be staff time when they do have to come out. Um, I had to take a look at the past experience, what we thought we might be dealing with and come up with an estimated amount on how we could uh, handle the animal control and I think for the additional $8,000 it's probably well worth it to allow the Peterborough Humane Society to manage it. Well, providing it's approved, we will uh, we'll monitor it over the next uh, eight months and then we can reevaluate prior to next year's budget to determine if this is the path we want to continue on. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor Nelson. Through you, Madam Chair. Uh, do, we, do we have a mechanism in place now so when, when they're called, they come out, they find out it's, I'll, for a better term, Joe Blow's dog, and Joe Blow's dog has gotten loose. Uh, do we have anything in place for where Joe Blow pays the cost? Maybe the first time it's free, second time it's like, you know what, Joe, you need to look after your dog. Uh, do we, is there a mechanism in place for that? Through Mayor Watson to Deputy Mayor Nelson, I think there's two points to that. So part of it will be looking at our nuisance bylaws, which we've talked about a lot, and coming back with a dog uh, at large bylaw, so that we have an opportunity as a municipality to uh, allow fines to be placed for dogs that are running at large. The other part to that is dogs that get taken to the Humane Society. So historically, when the dogs go to the Humane Society, when they get picked up, the owner gets charged a fee. Um, and the same fee gets charged back to the municipality. So that was one of the conversations I had with Mr. Mori to say, why is the township and the other constituents and the residents paying for Joe Blow's dog where we know he is the owner? Um, so they have revised their um, sign off the authority to give us the contact information so that we can go back to that individual and collect the fees so there isn't going to be a cost to the municipality. Um, I've also asked them to go as far as to just charge the entire fee, but I'm not sure we're there yet. So we'll continue to work on those particulars, um, trying to look at areas where the municipality isn't going to get charged when we are aware of where that dog goes. There will always be the case of you know dogs that, that we don't find the owners for and that we'll have to deal with, but um, in those cases, I, I would agree. Those were charges that were coming back to the municipality, and, and I don't believe that they should have been borne by the municipality. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Johnson. I'm just a speaker on that. Uh, <clears throat> um, I know in the past that's one way we get a little revenue is a lot of them that don't have dog tags. You got to pay for a dog tag before you get the dog out. And the way I look at it, it's like our building department. <clears throat> they don't take out the building permit, then therefore it's in place that they pay double. 
because they didn't take out the permit. And we put in <coughs> taxes every year that they take out a dog tag. So the way I look at it is that uh, <coughs> without all this other money, is that we tell people, you don't want to take out the dog tag, your dog's picked up, you're going to pay double for the dog tag. Now they might want to say, okay, I guess maybe that's not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, bottom line is, I think that's maybe a way that um, we do that on our building department. Maybe that's a way to kind of curb people to at least take a dog and get a dog tag. And we don't have something like that currently in our fee structure, is that correct? Right. Okay. So we can look at that and do that. Councillor Watt? Yes, Chief Madam Mayor. Is, is this policy just strictly for dogs or is it animals completely? Like, I mean, somebody may have a barrel cat that's roaming around so like that they want to get rid of or, I mean, there could be a wild animal roaming around kind of like that that's really tearing your property or your residence apartment like that. Is it, are they all covered or how is that, or are we just looking at dogs? Through Mayor Watson to Councillor Watt, um, we did have a discussion specifically about cats as well. Uh, the the way the agreement was structured previously did speak specifically to canines. Um, the reality is, is they do have cats being dropped off as well. Um, and they another topic that we had chatted about because they weren't currently charging when cats were being dropped off, provided that the the person dropping the cat off said that it was a stray cat. So um, I did speak to Sean about charging a fee for that so that if, if there is a cat that's hanging around and someone does want to drop it off and they don't have the ability just to say it's it's a stray cat and drop it off uh, free of charge. So I'm going to follow up with him on that to determine whether or not they put a fee in place. Um, but generally, if it's cats, we will be responsible for any cat that gets dropped off there as well. We're not coming out for cats, but we will uh, get charged if they're dropped off. And then just to, to pick up on Councillor Watts, the other part about like a wild animal or something, I'm assuming that that you're referring to, like what else would go to the Say a raccoon like, or something, you know, it's coming oh, to tear. Oh, I was thinking of bears. And, and tearing, your, <laughs> tearing your property apart. I mean, they can do some pretty big damage to themselves from wildlife. What do you do? Right. So it's we're the same as this domestic, agreement yeah. is including anything like that? Mm -hmm. At that point, we would probably go to um, the ministry or, or somebody to deal with any wildlife. So this would be more domestic animals. Yeah. 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 Any other questions from council? Was there a motion on this already? No, no motion. Anyone here to make a motion? Mm -hmm. Councilor Watt? Deputy Grand House? Yep. yep. To follow the recommendation. Yeah. To follow the recommendation? Thank Same you. <laughs> All in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you. Uh, on to section 10, committee minutes and other reports. We have one set of minutes uh, from the committee of the committee of adjustment. The adjustment? Committee of adjustment. adjustment. <laughs> uh, can I get a, a motion to receive and approve votes, please? Okay. Councillor Johnston, seconded by Councillor Rewart. All in favor? That motion carries. Um, Number 11, section 11, we've got a number of correspondence items, 11.1 .1, Town of Coburg, a resolution regarding homeless and unsheltered persons. What would council like to do with this? Also move that we receive the correspondence. Okay. So we second that. Councillor Watt, all in favor? And that motion carries. On to the town of Essex. A letter regarding the reinstatement of legislation permitting municipality to retain surplus proceeds from tax sales. Councillor Watt? Well, I'll make a motion to uh, receive it. And possibly change that after. I, I, I'd like to know a little bit more exactly what this means, if at if all possible. Okay. Um, does he want to oh, that that. that for conversation totally purpose? Yeah. yeah. Um, can you shed some light on this for sure. us, Madam Clerk? So, through you, Madam Mayor, I'm not the expert. Paul uh, is the expert on tax sales. Um, as it's typically the finance department that takes care of everything. Mm -hmm. um, but currently, from my understanding, um, when we receive a tax sale, uh, we are, are doing the tax sale because they were paying their property taxes. And then um, it goes through a long process. And so when we get to the end of that process, 
the property is put out um, almost like a tender and people can submit a bid. And so we try to recoup the taxes that are owed, but many times, and uh, it's become more frequent, now people are, are bidding well over that tax amount. So there's quite a bit of surplus once the taxes have been paid. Currently, that money gets remitted to the Ministry of Finance and the township doesn't receive it back. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't think we get that money back. I think it, it leaves the community. And um, so basically, this resolution is asking that that money stay within the community and then the municipality can use it for other purposes. It acts as revenue as opposed to being uh, remitted to the province and then potentially not seeing it again. And, and just do you know if the administrative costs related to that tax sale are bundled into the tax sale portion that the municipality gets? They are. So legal and collection yes. costs up until that, that point off. comes back to the municipality. Okay, thank you. Councilor right. Watt? Uh, thank you very much for that because that's kind of where I was going next to that. I mean, if we sell a tax is on under 20000 just for easy numbers, something like that, and we sell it for thirty. Is part of that extra ten for staff time and everything, all the everything that we've gone through to do that, or is the twenty thousand we've got to soak it up from the twenty thousand and basically cut our losses on it? But okay. If it's if we get something out of that extra, one, I'd like to change my to receive this part. Okay. So I'd like to change it to that anyway because question? I think we should. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're doing all the work on it. I think we should be the recipients of it. Okay, so, so motion support. to receive and support. Yes. Councillor Johnson, you're okay with that friendly amendment. Um, any other questions on the letter or mm -hmm. with the forums? Yeah. No? All in favor? And that motion carries. Uh, item 11.3, Association of Ontario Road Supervisors, uh, a letter um, about proposed fee from Enbridge Gas. Questions, comments? Um, yeah, I'd like to speak on on this letter if I might. No, sure. no, sure. Um, back a number of years ago, Enbridge Gas came out with this saying they were going to start charging municipalities for going around and locating their services in our property. Uh, we also had the conversation with them saying fine, that's fine, you, you want to charge us for locating uh, when we're doing work on the road or any section where that might be, maybe it's time we start licensing your pipes in our ground and you start paying the fee. That disappeared totally. They did not want to have any part of that. And that is still, I believe, unless municipal act has changed in that regard, but I still believe that we still have the right to do that as a municipality, and I don't think it's fair that it, it's a public service for to get gas and for to run on gas lines in our municipal property. And if they want to charge us when we've got to do work within our road lines uh, for to come and uh, and show us where their where their lines are, I don't agree with that at all. And so two can play the game of uh, looking at charging things. That's my that's my comment. So do you want to make a motion to? I would make a motion that if uh, I don't know how do I do want to that. Well, we have some correspondence before us, so we would typically either receive it or receive and support it. Well, I don't I don't uh, believe in supporting it. That's for sure. In, in that they uh, are allowed to charge us. Okay, so this is a. A letter from Aors, yes. and there's a recommendation in that letter. Sorry, let me go back down. I, that, did, I did read it, I apologize. That does say um, that the the cost should be borne by the utilities themselves, effectively. Yes. That, that it, shouldn't be, it should not be passed on to municipalities. Correct. So if you choose to receive and support that, then you're supporting that motion yep. that's in the letter from Aors. That's right, I support it. Okay, so we got motion to receive and support. Councillor Verbort, are you seconding that motion or do you have a question? Uh, no, I would like to support it. I think it's a great motion. Councillor what? Do we have gas anywhere like this? Don't have it? Is that the only thing in our, in our municipality? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so 
all through Delaware. No, I uh, I'm in full support. Then I'd like to until I get gas out here, then I might change my mind. Well, to the chair, I just make one comment. Uh, <clears throat> I'm involved with them all the time, the gas company. And uh, one thing they've started to do now is that when, when, when uh, you put in a, for a gas service, you go to a house, uh, they used to always do only get all the markings done from valve, hydro, and all that stuff. Now they throw it back on the customer. They have to do all that. They have to get all that done, which I get people phone me and say, well, just a minute. What's this? That's the wrong news to me because I never, we never experienced that before ever. But now, so they're taking a lot of emphasis off themselves and want to turn people to do these other little services. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion on the floor to receive and support. All in favor? And that motion carries. Uh, on to item number 12. We have a number of bylaws before us, and this is the part where I'll just hand it over to our clerk to run us through those bylaws. Martina, over to you. Uh, so three, Madam Mayor. Um, item 12.1, which was bylaw 2023-17, was the uh, zoning bylaw amendment, and that was already dealt with earlier in the meeting. The next bylaw is bylaw 2023-18. Uh, this is to execute the lease agreement with Man uh, with Barbecue at the Duro Community Center parking lot. The next bylaw after that, please uh, interrupt me if you have questions, of course. Um, the next bylaw after that is 2023-19. Uh, this is to authorize the clerk and deputy clerk to provide some civil marriage services to the public. Um, council had a report uh, a few meetings ago about providing those services, and council was in support of that and asked us to bring the bylaws back. So that's uh, bylaw number one for that project. The next one is bylaw 2023 20. Uh, this is to appoint the clerk and deputy clerk as persons authorized to issue marriage licenses. Bylaw 23, yeah, 2023 21. As to amend the user fees and charges bylaw to uh, include the fees for civil marriage services uh, into the fees and charges, so we can um, do that. And those are all of the bylaws. So, if you're all following along, I'm assuming questions, <laughs> questions on anything. So, can we get a motion to uh, adopt those? I'll make that motion. Councillor Johnson, seconded by Councillor Report. Okay. All in favor? Yep. And that motion carries. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, we don't have any reports derived from previous notice of motion, but we do have a notice of motion from Councillor Watt. Thank you for setting that in advance to get it on the agenda. Um, over to you, sir, to read, the, read your motion. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Through you. Uh, so, my notice of motion has to do with uh, the Minor Hockey Association and the changes that have come about the last while where we don't have hometown playoffs anymore. It's just uh, you know, uh, big big centers in, in a playoff format or a, a tournament format, which it really hurts us. So um, I'm requesting, whereas the Duro and District Minor Hockey and the Township of Duro Dummer have had a long history with the Ontario Minor Hockey Association, and whereas the Hockey Association has been involved in playoff hockey for decades, and whereas every minor hockey group in Ontario has enjoyed the previous format of traveling back and forth from town to town competing to move on to the next plateau in their chase for a provincial championship. And whereas the economic gains that small and medium municipalities enjoy from accommodation revenue as well as the restaurants and stores being utilized, therefore be it resolved that the Township of Durodummer send a letter to the Ontario Minor Hockey Association requesting to return to the previous playoff format that we have all enjoyed for years. And be it also further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to all Ontario municipalities for endorsement, as well as the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries. Uh, that's my notes of motion. So thank okay. you very much, and that'll come to the next meeting. So we do need a seconder for it to come to the next meeting. Yes. Yep. Do. Yep. Um, so Deputy Mayor Nassim, you're seconding. I'll second. Okay. Um, no, discussion. no discussion. All in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you. So it will come to the next meeting, uh, which I think is April 25th, yes. um, and to be put to a vote and debate it as Thank you. Thank you. Um, on to item number 15. Any announcements? Seeing nothing from council, I have one. I'll rhyme off. This Saturday is the Community Easter Egg Hunt that's sponsored by our Recreation Department. 
uh, at Durham Park North. So that's Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. So come one, come all. And uh, seeing no further announcements, we are about to move, we're going to move into closed session. Um, so this was an, uh, an update to the agenda. So we're moving into closed session uh, under Section 239 of the Municipal Act uh, to receive advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. So a motion. No, I'm going to, uh, I do have one. That oh, okay. Is that, uh, <clears throat> on uh, April the 29th, Alliance is having a, a, a beef uh, supper and uh, a live option after it. So uh, we invite you to buy a ticket and come to the beef uh, supper. On uh, That's on Saturday night. It starts at 6 o'clock on Saturday night. And uh, we would like as many people to go. We have only limited the number of tickets up upstairs in Warsaw here. So uh, we'd like everybody to uh, that are interested to go to supper. Um, it's twenty-five dollars a person. Okay, but it's a fundraiser for our uh, Lions group in, in Warsaw. Thank you for that. Now, motion to go to close. Go to close. Councillor Watt, seconded by Deputy Mayor Nelson. All in favor? I'll get the that motion carries. So, uh, folks, if you'll excuse us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ask what happened to the minutes from the last meeting. Are they on the They're not online during. Um, Did I miss something? She says. The minutes from our last regular meeting. Mm -hmm. Three sets there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did approve three sets this evening. Sorry. They're attached to the agenda document. Sorry, uh, ladies. Okay, there's they're attached to the really? online. I'm going to just check right now. Um, 7.1. Okay, just one moment. Let me take a peek here. But I just pulled up the online. There's nothing in the minutes column. Oh, no, there'd be nothing in the minutes column because they're attached to the agenda. To be approved. And once they're approved tonight, okay. then they get amended tomorrow morning and they get posted. That explains it. Yeah. I just thought they would have been there as a draft. Not till council provides their approval. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we did miss, we we miss anything? No. no, we did 7.1. It was the consent item. All, all under oh, consent. Everything okay. is done. Yeah, okay. and so okay. they'll be they'll just okay. show up in the that section tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. 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 Good